mean by college I have that bad data copy of this to all the boards of the committee, is breaks down uh, per ward across the constituency how many households this starts to affect. So as you can see, total in the constituency would be 3,193 households. Uh, that's 28% of the total of the total people that actually receive the discount at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'd say a big impact on this option. Uh, just over just under 12,000 resident uh, households currently yeah, currently receive that discount. I think it's not 7.6%, sorry, it's 7.76% discount. Yeah, so that's the option that's on the table. Um, the other options in this area, um, additional income through uh, commemoration and registration to memorial services through ancillary products generally. Um, charging for people using allotments, people using the bowling greens and football teams playing the pitches to contribute more towards the maintenance. And that would be additional income of around 35,000 a year. Car parking, um, what we'd call, if it was accepted by members, we would call car parking meters across all the countryside parks, um, as well as in for Pet Rock and Mute right into its new GP home. Um, the limit of non-file enforcement is essentially more on the spot fines. We, we focus more on that team, we restructure that team to have them focus more on, on issuing on issue fines and increasing income through that label. The coal polling zones are, at the moment, people can request putting signs up on the end of the street to, to actually ban coal coal. If people do get coal coal, they can be brought into the council. We'll um, trade the standards for them, visit the organisation and make sure we stop it. Um, what we'll actually do is start charging that per, we we'll start charging for that. So every resident on the street would have to be put, would have to be free to pay a set to pay an annual fee for us to implement so it's for us to implement a cold call job. So that's another option that we'll put in terms of that'll be around about 140,000 in income over the next two years. These are all this one again is pest control again, elements of pest control that we don't charge for that we could. Things like wasps and wasp nests, things like that, we potentially start charging for that. Roadside gripping, now we can't say to them there's a full list of every roadside gripping that we've got. We've got around about 300 across the borough. 100 of them were installed on strategic locations. Strategic locations, But um, we've installed another 200 using area for them. Now, what we're proposing is that we leave the bin there, those additional 200, but we won't actually continue for them. So we'd stop, we'd stop that. So residents will come on board and welcome to actually continue using them, continue filling them for them themselves, or the council will fill them anymore. There's a full list of all those locations that we can say to the community. Gertrude Court is, I am looking at the street, Gertrude Court is, uh, uh, at the moment, is a council respite home. Essentially, what we'll be doing is expanding the service of Gertrude Court, putting a bit more work into it, and allowing the NHS to start paying just some of the beds. So it's a, it's it changes the service quite significantly, but it couldn't change it for the way so you know we needed to. We, we actually we, we should we should, we should actually increase its capacity. <coughs> We've got ten public conveniences across the borough. Um, this option will close the ball. Um, with unless the community wants to take over, but essentially the option will close the ball. In the borough, in this constituency, you've got one of South Parade in West Derby, one of the Concourse in West Derby. One on Hoyle Road and one on Fenton Lane and Melbourne. They all close unless the community wants to take over the whole thing. As I said, not the very much for us. Sorry? Not the very much for us. Not the very much The last one, which is a question from Millie on as well community libraries. Um, we've got 15 community libraries, which are smaller libraries. Um, this option would save just short of half a million, 411,000 through quite radical and quite quite heavy reduction in their opening hours, so they'd be open either two or three days a week of them. Um, in this constituency, West Kirby and Hesworth wouldn't be affected, but the libraries of Green Street, Coyle, Kirby, Kenzie, Buckton and Woodshed would. That essentially would mean that they would go for two, two days a week open the following week, three days a week open the following week, or some, um, or some uh, combination <coughs> of, of, of those hours. Now that would affect 15 libraries across the world, so it's fairly even in terms of how it's spread, so that's the option. In terms of the actual savings we need to find, I said earlier on that we, that we've already saved, that we've got to save 18 million next year. 
Um, we have already through this project delivered some of the staff remodeling and reduction savings that we did last year. We've proposed restructuring staff and reducing the number of staff and merging teams together. That take, take away around about 15 and a half million of the 18 million that we need to save. What's left is 2.5 million of which have 2.5 million that members need to make decisions on in December. Well, recommendations on in December. Um, the options that I've just talked you through total up to just under 4 million, so there is some choice there, and that's why we're concerned at the moment. Up to now, we've got just over 6,200 responses. We've got a couple of weeks left. Uh, members, as you know, are all involved, heavily involved in the scrutiny process at the moment, going through the policy and performance committee, looking at these options in more detail. The consultation closes at the end of this month, the 31st. Um, after that, the following week, we'll be reporting back to all committees with the results of the consultation, including um, what the committee wants to put forward at the time. And that's been done too. I'm happy to take questions now or take them as well.
We cannot enforce the call, or we will not enforce the call calling call, calling zones uh, for people who refuse to pay or opt not to pay. So we will only act upon complaints, calls, and put the telephone systems in where we want to put them in for people who actually agree to pay the £10. We can't, we won't force people to pay the £10. If the majority of the streets agree to pay it, we'll implement it. But if people say they're not going to pay the £10, we won't be forced to. But we will not act upon any complaints that they may have. Okay. Um, any more direct questions? Yeah, Matthew, I, I admire your uh, open and desire for democracy. That's why we used to like the area forums. Uh, but being that as it may, um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to be having a public question time in just a second, so it will roll into that. So I'm sure people will retain those questions. We can cover them at that stage. Okay. Can I make yeah. a comment, Chair? Yeah. Uh, there was a misinformation in that. Pesswall right. is not in Wirral West, it's in Wirral South. Well, uh, okay. So that's, that's a, a library that isn't available, per se. Okay. Good point, well made, and Kevin will be, <laughs> will be suitably um, dealt with outside, uh, make him stand outside the rain for half an hour. Uh, excellent, and it's, yeah, everyone's woken up. Yes, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> Be very quick one. Uh, I wouldn't like people in the audience to think that we're just sitting here lying back and taking all of this, because we councillors in Lloyd Lake and Mel's are quite outraged by some of the proposals to close our libraries, to close our toilets, which we fought for, and a number of other things. So just don't go away thinking that all of us are just going to sit back and allow this to happen, because we're going to fight a lot of this very, very vigorously. Okay. Um, okay, as I, as I did point out, um, people's, people's positions on this are, I think, pretty well known on the record. This was about an information sharing um, exercise and also, I think, and further encouragement to make sure people actually respond to the consultation. Um, consultation being a good thing, which is why we introduced it in the first place. So, uh, encourage people to do that if that's okay. Is does anyone else have any questions, or do we, we can now roll into the public question time? Are people content to roll into the public question time? So, Kev, thanks for that. I know you said you're going to stay on to answer some further questions. The fire brigade is still at the back to answer any questions that people have got from the earlier presentation, and we've got assorted officers. Mark's still here in terms of anything from the golf. So we have an assorted colleague, and of course, your local councillors might know some of the answers to. So, uh, can I have an indication of anyone? We're now in public question time. Gosh. Lots and lots. Joe, there's, there's a chap who's been trying to get into the back through most of the meeting in the white jumper. So, uh, who you are, who you represent, and the question. in terms of the chief executive's budget decisions, whether the chief executive will still actually be here, so yes, they do still exist. 
So, unfortunately, he's not taking his proposal with him, as they would say. Uh, the gentleman at the back. Fifty-two million was not what the TV made. The fifty-two million was the cost that it would have cost Winnell Council for all the TV across the world, vignettes, images of Wirral, how do we had to pay for that? So it, it, it's the cost, if we'd have to buy that advertising space, that's sort of the, the cost and the value in terms of what they got back from it. Can, can I? that shows Hoylake, West Kirby, and the Wirral Peninsula off to its best. No. And actually, can we just maybe all just welcome that fact that we've actually had some, some good news. I, I think there will be some people who won't accept that, but I think broadly in those terms, I think we would accept it was quite a major success. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. So you have that. This, well, I think you have, you had your question, and I'm trying to be fair to everyone. So, the gentleman, sorry, the, sorry, if everyone shouts at the same time, I'll just speak loud, it will get very, very noisy. Um, the person behind my colleague here, yeah, no, no, sorry, the lady down here. Hi, I'm from uh, Greece, I'm a child, I'm a state of the Children's Centre and what have you. Interested in the presentation that Dan did earlier, but also the um, budget presentation. I think it would be really helpful for the residents of Greasby particularly, uh, for it to be a very transparent process. If we could get some figures from the council as to the impact of the new proposed fire station and community services on, on their budget, because obviously we, everybody knows there's money got to be saved, but we as residents have concerns that it is going to be at the expense of our services. Um, and it's an, an opportunity, that there's an opportunity come along, I don't want to say opportunist, an opportunity has come along that puts on a plate for the council a big spending, of, uh, saving opportunity. And I think it would be fair for the residents for us to have a clear outline of the difference in cost to you of the current services staying as they are or being incorporated into the proposed fire station. All right, thank you for that. I think. Kev, if you could put that together, I think what's being suggested is the fire station being proposals around the fire station. Is that being used as a Trojan horse to cut other services in the Greensby area and so on and so forth? No, no, no. With, with respect, I didn't mean it to come across in, no, that, okay. in, in that way. It's, it, I'm not trying to speak offensively no, no, towards no, you no. in any way whatsoever. I just think it would be good for us as a community to see the, the actual uh, cost implications of that situation so that we're fully informed and the whole process is fully transparent for us. Yeah, I'll take that back to uh, to colleagues in Chudden Young Pearsons and ask for that information. Thank you. All right. And you've got the cabinet member here as well. So we'll yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. So more questions? All right. The lady in the pink over the side there. I'd like to pick up her point because um, I'm one of the bleeding <coughs> Greasby girls who do the planters in Greasby. And we were working um, a, a few days ago, and it was quite upsetting, really, to find that various um, elderly folk, as they came through the village, especially past the library, uh, were approaching us saying, um, would you ladies happen to know if this rumour about the fire station is true? Um, and I would like to you know, just highlight the point that a lot of people who don't have access 
um, to computers or they're not very confident with them. And it is really quite shocking that there are a whole range of people in Greece, which is known to be, uh, you know, like lots of places on the world, to have a, a much uh, higher proportion of elderly residents than some others, that they are going to be totally sort of disenfranchised in this um, consultation because that particular area of Greece is an important um, centre to them. Their, their life is Greece. They perhaps don't have opportunities to go on climate holidays that, well, I do. Um, and it's that um, focal on the uh, community in a very small way. And I do know that the fire authority um, won't know that bit of Greece. They can't know it. They are um, uh, councillors from all over Merseyside. So I guess what I'm saying is how are a lot of folk in uh, Greece for whom that part of land is important and precious and keep them sane, how are they going to actually have access to be able to take part in the consultation? A great question. Thank you very much. And uh, our colleague at the back there is... Sorry, do you want to just take the microphone so everyone... Oh, we are? Yeah. Um, we are conscious of that fact. Uh, literally today I have just delivered uh, hundreds of leaflets, the ones that you see, the newsletters that you have on your chairs today, and I've had my crews out today and will be over the next few days delivering those to that uh, immediate area. Um, if you've got any ideas of particular groups that you feel may be disenfranchised, see me afterwards and I'll make sure that we target those areas specifically. There's the public, sorry, there's the public consultation meeting, but also there is the, uh, the, the, the functional address for the fire service headquarters, and we can provide that, and also the local stations that are there at this point, precise moment in time. I don't wish to come across as aggressive or take up people's time, but these are people with mobility problems um, who, who cannot get to the late meetings at the Methodist Church Hall. Several people I know, for me, that's just way, way beyond what they can do after their day. After their day, doing whatever they do, when you're 83 or 73 or you've got a mobility scooter. So I do feel that, that it's a bit, a bit inadequate for you. Okay, can I make a suggestion? It's going a bit weird if you're having a conversation by passing the microphone to each other. So, uh, I am absolutely certain that those issues will be picked up at the end of the meeting. And I know your ward councillors are onto this, you know, all, all over this particular issue, as there would be in Upton, and I know they are in West Kirby too. So, uh, you know, we are determined that the consultation should be open and honest and frank, and that no one should be excluded from that process. And that goes across the board, everyone who's sitting here at the moment, and that's right to step. Okay. Yes. yes.
following that process, rational decisions will be made and people will behave rationally. And the sorts of things that you've talked about in terms of that whole evidence base about the importance of libraries, the issues with the elderly and social exclusion and the wider things that libraries do to make we're all a, a better kind of general place and to improve the quality of life of people will be, will be taken into account in that discussion. If it isn't, then it will be down to voices on the council where proposals are put forward for to make, to make that case again and to see if we can win that argument. But I think at the moment, 